European Union nations are struggling to come to an agreement on dealing with the deepening energy crisis. Croatia and Lithuania want a wholesale gas cap, while Slovenia is asking for a ceiling only for liquefied gas. Finland and Slovakia cannot agree on direct subsidies, and Germany, the bloc's biggest economy and the main opponent of capping gas prices, wants joint purchases, reduced consumption and a boost in supply. Well, for more, Alex Kadia joins us live from Brussels. Alex, there are a range of options being discussed on these gas price caps. What can we expect, though, uh, from the announcement that's expected later today? Well, Ursula von Leyen, the EU Commission president, will be giving a speech in uh, Strasbourg in about an hour's time, laying out what we think will be those options. As you presented it very well, uh, there's 27 different member states with 27 different energy agendas, and that's a real challenge to, put, to find an agreement on this. We're hearing at the moment that there may be an announcement on that joint purchasing that you mentioned. Obviously, Germany is pushing for that, a facilitation mechanism of some sort to allow uh, member states to uh, jointly purchase and then share gas. That's one option that we're hearing. Uh, another thing is we saw a leaked document earlier today saying that transactions at Europe's largest gas exchange in the Netherlands may be capped for liquid natural gas, but that would be a dynamic price cap, which can change over time and can be uh, uh, chosen to or be launched at a, at a certain point in time. So not entirely clear, but it's really more about what isn't being announced. As you said, member states calling for a wholesale gas cap. That's not happening, not even just for gas to generate electricity. Uh, no decoupling of prices between gas and electricity, which some member states have called for, and also no change in the benchmarking of cheaper energy prices like wind and solar, which would have allowed electricity prices to go down. So it's very much a, a, a limited announcement today we expect from the European Commission. Mm, Alex, uh, impatience may well be growing among some uh, EU member states in, in the pursuit of these solutions, but it looks like uh, EU members are nowhere near any kind of consensus on how to beat the energy crunch. Is there a silver lining to all of this? Yeah, you're right. There are nowhere near a consensus. That's probably a fair description. It's also urgent for people here in Belgium and across the European Union who are seeing their energy bills and their household bills absolutely flying through the roof and not really knowing how to deal with it. Now, there is a silver lining, I have to say, despite the fact that 27 member states aren't in agreement because they have 27 energy policies of their own. Uh, the European Union has already done a fair bit. So a windfall tax on the profits of energy companies has already been agreed uh, by the EU. That money, they are estimating or hoping that it will raise about 140 billion euros. That money will then be transferred to member states, like here in Belgium. And in the last couple of weeks, uh, in the last month, Belgium announced measures to support households with their energy bills, direct payments from the Belgian government uh, to households. So announcements like that are happening across the European Union. So on a small scale, the EU has certainly stepped in and helped and, and passed this windfall tax, for example, on the profits of energy companies. But those kind of large scale, big, difficult issues that they're trying to tackle with, uh, still no resolution in sight. We wait to hear more from Ursula von der Leyen, uh, the EU Commission president, later today. Alex, thank you for that. Alex Cadier there in Brussels.